You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma podcast. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode. Excited to share this episode with you today. But before we do, I've got to thank our sponsors. First of all, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. They've been a huge part of this podcast for the last few years. So the Oklahoma Hall of Fame have been sharing Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com. And for daily updates, go to Oklahoma HOF on Instagram and give them a follow. Our other sponsor today is Chicksaw Nation. Now, the Chicksaw Nation have sponsored pretty much everything in Oklahoma. They're a huge supporter of Oklahoma. And it's an honor to have their name and their brand supporting this podcast. So a huge shout out to Governor Anatoby for supporting this podcast. It really means a lot. Our third sponsor is Diffie Ford Lincoln down in El Reno. Now, this one makes me so happy because these guys are great friends of mine, um, play a lot of golf together. I've bought my cars from them. Do most of my oil changes down there, have a cup of coffee, hang out down in El Reno. It's a good spot to go. And not only are they great friends, but they provide a great service. So for over 60 years, a third generation family owned Oklahoma business down in El Reno. They're also in Bethany as well. So people in the Bethany area know the Diffies really well. But if you're looking for anything new used, um, Ford, Lincoln, or whatever, I'm sure they could find anything you want. Um, check them out, DiffieFord.net, and then on Instagram at DiffieFordLincoln. This episode is presented by Citizens Bank of Edmond. Citizens Bank of Edmond has been serving Edmond since 1901. They pride themselves on investing in the community and are here for all your personal and business banking needs. For more information, go to MyCitizens.Bank and follow them on Instagram at CitizensEdmond, as well as... Go bank there because I bank there too. It's been a fantastic personal experience for me. I've had my podcast account there now, my podcast business account there now for a few, four years now, I think. And it's been fantastic. So definitely worth your time. They're a great group of people and they're always there to answer the phone when I forget my password because I seem to forget it daily. Um, So yeah, go to Citizens Edmund and um, check them out. It's been awesome. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hoon here, host, back with another episode. Got a local running legend on the podcast. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about running leading up to Memorial Marathon. Um, gives me great pleasure to introduce John Janette to the podcast. Yo. <laughs> Thanks, Yo, Mike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah. I mean, we sat down, what, a month ago to do your uh, Beer Hop podcast Yeah, we're on the, boys. we had you on the Beer Hop podcast. It was cool, man. We uh, talked a lot about... We talked a lot about podcasts, uh, a little bit about beer. It was good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I think I told uh, your other John this too. It's like I don't get to do that very often. It's just to sit and hang out with guys and chat yeah. and have a podcast that way. And it's always it's so so refreshing to do that. Loved it. So yeah, for everyone listening, go listen to the Beer Hop podcast. Um, <laughs> literally, learn about local beer and go to the app. Right, Beer Beer Hop app. Yep. You guys have. Um, yep. But yeah, uh, I think we first met probably just in and around the running space, Red Coyote stuff. Yes, sir. Um, um, you're obviously a local legend in the running world, and people know you. From oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, uh, thank you, you know, thank Monday you. miles and all the stuff you guys have done. Yeah. Um, before we dive into the running stuff, though, let's build some context, man. What, uh, what's your story? Where were you born and raised? Um, I was born in Warren, Ohio in uh, 1986. Um, I don't remember Ohio much at all. We lived, okay. like, uh, we lived in a trailer, I think. Uh, and then we, uh, my dad was in the Marines. And... Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't remember Ohio. I remember moving to Laredo, Texas, kind of in the early 90s. And then the entire 90s was in was in Laredo. And then uh, at the year 2000, we moved to North Carolina. And so most of my like upbringing, I feel like was, or most of my formidable years were in North Carolina, uh-huh. um, Winston-Salem, Kernersville. And then I went to college at App State and Boone. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I was... I was uh, in college for a long time, <laughs> just floundering and enjoying myself uh, for about six years. And then I uh, actually, uh, I just basically ran out of, I couldn't take out any more college loans. Uh-huh. And so I, I had to do something. So I enlisted in the Air Force, uh, took the first job I could get that I was qualified for off the ASVAB test. And it was like a flying position on the AWACS. And that brings you to, if you go through AWACS, you, you, 
you're inevitably going to end up in uh, Oklahoma City City. (laughs) at Tinker Air Force Base. And so, uh, yeah, then I was at Tinker. And I stuck around. I got out in like 2016, but I've stuck around. Um, I tried to leave uh, when I got out. I was trying to, you know, maybe migrate up to Colorado. But, uh, you know, plans changed. And Mm -hmm. Oklahoma's been really great. And I've enjoyed the going on like i got here in august 2011 which we talked about on the beer hop podcast the same time the same right. time we might have been <laughs> yeah might have been almost like the same might have been the same day but i feel like it was definitely around the same week yeah um, that we arrived here but um yeah I've, wa- I've enjoyed watching the city grow and it's changed and it's been awesome uh to experience yeah and, yeah and i got like established roots here over, over like 13 years you really get start to your roots start to really um take hold and so it'd be hard to, uh, you know, sometimes I think about leaving, but it'd be really hard to leave, honestly. And mm-hmm. yeah, I do love it here. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, we're totally the same on that. Right. Like, it's amazing how like parallel those experiences are like, getting here and, and, and the city being super young. And I still remember like hitting golf balls and first practice session at college, looking at Lake Hafner, looking down at downtown, seeing cranes around Devon Tower. Yeah, I remember that, too. Right? I, I got off of the my uh, first sergeant picked me up from the um, Will Rogers, you know, and even the airport was different back then. But yeah. I remember driving down 40 and coming up on the city and seeing, yeah, Devon still had the cranes up at the top. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's, so much more has developed since then. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, App State. That's where Luke Combs went. Luke Combs, uh, right. man, App State. I don't know. I I feel like Luke Holmes is from North Carolina, but I, I just, he, yeah, I dude, get, if you I, go to App State, that's yeah, amazing. That's, I, that's the only reason I was like, I've heard of that before. Luke Holmes went to App State. I know uh, uh, Rainbow right. Kitten Surprise is from App State. Yeah, the, I don't know if you know about that band. I do not. <laughs> see how old Luke Holmes is. I don't know. Uh, he's probably my age. So that would have been funny if you like you're in school with Luke Combs. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that's ringing bells now. Like, not not I didn't know Luke Combs, but now I, I feel like my friends talk about like he's 34. 34. Okay, so he'd be he would have missed me a little missed bit. You a little yeah, bit. yeah. Um, that's yeah, cool, I mean, man. North Carolina is beautiful. It, North Carolina is amazing. Um, and if if I did move, that would be somewhere I'd consider going back, just because I still got a lot of friends and family there. And uh, um, North Carolina is the I always say it's like the most beautiful mountains and the best beaches on the East coast, like both of them. So yeah, it's got everything. <laughs> so you, you said like dad was a Marine. Yes, sir. So obviously you grew up like that's in the family. Yep. Did you not want to go to, it was like the last resort for you. Oh you man. Going? So what Marines, to to uh, I wanted to go to, like, honestly, uh, growing up, you get put on those, like at a real young age in like middle school or elementary school, you get put in those like, like college bound groups and all that. And like, so I just always like assumed I was, you know, you're, you just, as a child, as a kid, you just assume you're supposed to go and all your friends are going to go. And like, but I never really like aspired to be like anything like, um, you know, I never had like serious aspirations to do stuff, you know, like, like I didn't want to be like a fireman or a teacher or a, or a doctor or a lawyer or something. So it was always kind of like, well, I'm going to go to college and figure it out. I was originally going for elementary ed And then, uh, you know, like I said, I was, I kind of floundered a lot in college. I, I like bounced around majors a lot and did like psychology and sociology to the point where like, I never, you know, I never finished any of them, (laughs) but I have like so many credits, but it was like, you know, never finished in the air force. I was able to like, uh, put some of that, some of the college to good use, but, um, yeah, so I didn't know what I wanted to do my sophomore year in college at app state. Um, I did because of my dad and his guidance and everything, I considered going to the Marines and I was doing a, uh, um, officer candidate school and I applied for that and I got in and kind of leading up to that. So basically officer candidate school, you would go the summer after your sophomore year for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you would go again, um, the summer of your senior year or maybe the next summer, the summer of your junior year and you'd, you'd complete it. And then when you graduate college, you would commission. Mm -hmm. Um, but leading up to that summer, uh, I was like basically kind of having like a meltdown. Like I was like, I don't know if this is really what I want to do. Like I'm, I started to freak out a little bit and I actually was like, I I withdrew. And I remember getting a lot of flack from like the, the recruiter, like, uh, like first he would be like, he was like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. He was like, first he was like, Oh, like, like, you know, trying to give me a pep talk that I could do it. And then I was, and then I was like firm, no, like, and then he was like, like flipping out of me, calling me like names and all this stuff. And then, and then he would, then he would like re- reel it back in and like yeah. try to woo me in again. And my dad was like, 
no, you're not like obligated to go. Like, since you haven't been at all, you have no obligation. Like you can pull out and he's like, just stand firm on your, and man, I kind of honestly, like a lot of what he was saying, like got to me a little bit. Like I was like, had a little bit of problems where like, I was like, man, I, I feel like I really, uh, let everyone down or something. But I mean, that's, well, I mean, it sounds like your dad had your back anyway. And was just yeah. like, you make this, this decision or whatever it is, you stand by it. And that's kind of like the, the rules to live by, I guess. Or, but, you know, it could have been different if your dad was like, no, you should probably do this as well. As <laughs> yeah. this, like on your, on your back. Or, My dad is really cool, man. He's like, uh, he is, um, he's always like, he, he was diehard Marine in my younger, like when I was younger. Um, I feel like after nine 11, he was gone a lot when I was in high school. And then when he came after all of that, he he became a little less like hardcore. He was a little more of a, I don't know if his like life perspective changed, but he, I don't want to call him a softy, but he was like his, Something changed. he was a little less intimidating and everything after that. Um, but, uh, he's always wanted, um, he's always wanted his kids. You know, he's always said like the military is a good life. Like it offers a lot of good things. And so I don't think he was ever really like, y'all have to be Marines, but I think he just wanted us to, you know, the air force worked for me when I ended up enlisting. Yeah. Um, Two of my other brothers uh, are in the Navy now still, one enlisted and one um, officer out in San Diego. But the uh, the funny part was like, I think from my old, there's six of us and my oldest brother, um, all the way down to my youngest brother. Four I think boys? my, yeah, <laughs> uh, well, I have one sister. So five, uh, four brothers, one sister. Okay. But every single one of us kind of went through a phase where we almost became a Marine and None of us ended up like every single one, except for my brother, Zach went through. So even my sister, we all went through the almost, almost joining the Marines. And then we ended up not doing it. Um, but he still got like three of three, uh, in military, yeah. but he had like requirements, like, um, all of his, all of his sons were the main thing was like, you go to, you be an Eagle scout and you go to college. So we all did that. That's cool. Um, some of us did better in college, <laughs> not me, but, uh, uh, my other brothers did good and then but yeah he got all eagle scouts too so that's cool yeah what do you remember about that time then around 9 11 when your dad's in the military like did he go to war is he overseas yeah he was overseas a lot afterwards so okay. he was in um he was in like desert storm in the early 90s which i don't remember you know he was gone a lot then too but i don't remember as much um but then and i was in high school and during 9 11 and after I was a sophomore and then after that, he was gone a lot intermittently through my junior and senior years. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like, that was kind of a weird time. Uh, like I remember it being just kind of, um, my older brother was already in college. He, he actually never lived with us in North Carolina. So he ended up going to Texas A&M um, cause he was, he was a graduated in Laredo. Yeah. Um, so I was the oldest at that time with my family. And uh, I just remember, you know, going through the high school years, we lived in, I was making new friends and also like, it was just kind of like a, my mom's just doing her best with all of the other kids. And I was just, there was like, not a lot of like, we had rules, but there was like, also like not a lot of structure. There was, a, it was kind of the wild west in a, in a sense, yeah. <laughs> like high school was some fun times. Uh, I, I don't know. It just seemed crazy looking back on it, but right. yeah. Yeah. You just do, you know, obviously you're there to support mom and get by. Right. And right. It's like, there's a general understanding of like, don't do anything really stupid, but just keep yourself alive and don't, you know, don't be an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, grow up a little bit, have us have some awareness and realize that like, you know, dad's overseas, like risking his life. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, but and looking yeah. back to like, is, uh, looking back on my mom, like my mom is just a straight badass to be able to uh -huh. like being a, a 38. Now, I think I'm about the same age as my mom was, uh, during that nine 11, like within the same time frame that she would have been in the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about how busy things get in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, my mom had six or like five kids at that point. Like yeah. with my other brother gone, I'm like, that was bonkers. Like, I don't know how she was doing a lot of that when my dad was gone, like yeah. just by, I mean, there's no time, there was no time in her day, I feel like. And so, yeah, that, that's something I, I really respect and that's really awesome. But yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that when you, um, when you come to Oklahoma city or, or I guess before you're in, you know, you, you go to the air force, like remind me, where were you before you came to Oklahoma city or was it like, um, before I came to Oklahoma city, I was, I left Boone in about 2000, it would have been 2010. Yeah. And then I was back living with my, with my family again, back in my, back in my house for like, not, a, not quite a year. And I was working in, um, 
a job that I used to do in the summers when I was uh, in college, but it was like a, it was like a electrical, it was like a manufacturing electrical. We'd make circuit boards like on a, on a production line. Like it almost felt like a soldering and whatever. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like soldering. And like, yeah. you know, people would smoke in there. It was crazy. It almost feels like a, yeah, it was wild, man. Like uh, I was doing that job on like a production line. Just like you have like a punch card with a clock. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was doing that. And at that time, I remember like my other brother was working there with me too. And my mom even worked there for a little bit. And uh, so it was kind of wild, man. We were all there together. Um, but yeah, I was only there for like, before the Air Force, I was only back in Kernersville, North Carolina for about like, I, I want to say like six or eight months. And then getting the ball rolling to go into the Air Force, not knowing where I was going to go yet. Right. But um, in the Air Force, and the way it happened with Oklahoma was like, you know, in the Air Force, you get, you take that ASFAB test and you get some scores. And I thought like, I, I did, I had pretty good scores for the ASFAB test. I think just based on like being in college for so long and stuff. Um, so like I had really pretty good pick for my jobs and like, I heard like flyer jobs or a, like when you're a flyer, like yeah. aviation, aviation in the Air Force is like good to be, um, just really good jobs. So I was like, I picked that one with the AWACS. And I remember going through basic training and you're in San Antonio and like everyone starts getting, uh, you get these sheets where you can pick all the places you want to go. And I remember being like, oh, this is exciting. But then with my job, I only got four places to pick. And it was like Oklahoma, Georgia, uh, Kadena in Japan, or like um, um, Anchorage. And so in my mind, I was like, Anchorage in Japan, this is amazing. Done. Yeah. But little did I know that with like AWACS, it's like, you're not going to go to those places unless, at least at that time, you're not going to go to those places unless you have like more time and service. So it was like, you're either going to go to Georgia or Oklahoma. Yeah. But even I was, ex I'm like easily excited, excitable. So I'm like a new place. This is going to be cool. You know? Yeah. Um, and at that time, all I knew of Oklahoma was like tornadoes. And then I knew about like the thunder, like Westbrook and Durant. <laughs> So I was like, this is cool. Yeah. Um, I remember asking my, uh, my instructor in San Antonio, cause she was from Oklahoma. I'm like, like, what do people do about tornadoes? Like it was perplexing to me. I was like, how do people live? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And she was just like, they just live. Like, what do you mean? She looked at me like I'm an idiot. And I'm like, Sit on their back porch and watch I'm like it. tornadoes. Yeah. Like really? Like what about when it destroys everything? And they're like, they just rebuild. rebuild. And I was like, yeah. I was like, dang, that's crazy. You know, I was like, wow. Yeah. Like my, she's like, what are you expecting me to say? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't know. Do they migrate? Like, do they move to a different, right. you know, but I'm like, she's like, no, nah, they just rebuild. And I was like, like, I can't imagine. This is you know, it's baffling. Yeah. yeah. God, that's yeah I can't imagine what that was like right you could you know from North Carolina and it's beautiful and you come yeah. to Oklahoma it's <laughs> yeah. kind of similar to me too right because yeah. it's like you know you got mountains and beautiful stuff yeah Wales is like gorgeous yeah <laughs> for the most part when the sun's out it's, yeah and then you come here and you're like that's not a mountain that's a hill yeah um, you know and it's a trash hill right? yeah <laughs> like or whatever it is yeah uh yeah, well, I mean, what's that like when you're like, oh, I get to basic, I'm good, I'm going to work, I've got a career now, I'm yeah. going to Oklahoma City. Yeah, I'm just like, I was kind of like, damn, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, and then, um, but, you know, I made the most of it. When I got to Tinker, I was excited, I was on my own. I was like, you know, I, it was like, I seemed like I, I felt like I was making, like, life moves, and it was, like, yeah. cool. And the air, uh, AWACS was, like, wild, too, because, like, when I got on the airplane, like, I'm not someone who's, like, I can, I get kind of airsick, you know? And then I'm... So like a couple years later, like 2013 or something, like my first deployment, and I'm like, I'm like flying, uh, flying sorties, and like I'm in the back of the jet. I'm not flying an airplane, sure. uh, but like, you know, I'm back there. Like, how did I? And I just have these moments where I'd be like, how did I get? Like, how am I here in this airplane, like overseas, like flying around, yeah. doing what I'm doing here? I'm like, this is bizarre. Like, you know, because back to being in high school, like I never had these like big aspirations. All I ever liked to do was run. And <laughs> I like to run and be with my friends. And like, those are my passions, you know, right. like, like movies. And so all those things, if you tell adults at that time that you're like, I love movies and running. And like, I love hanging out with my friends are just like, no, you have to have like something like, like legit. You have to have a career. You have to have like, right. Like, okay, Forrest. <laughs> you're like, what do you really want to do? And I'm like, yeah. I don't like, I don't know. Like some, <laughs> can I not just watch movies and run? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just want to do the things I want. <laughs> I just want to do what I want. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but dude, I, people listening to that, like ever. Yeah. Me too. I want to do what I just do what I want. Yeah. Like, the longer we can keep doing that, the better off we'll be. For sure, for uh, sure. In well, yeah, I say that with you know asterisks. Yeah. Um, 
So you just mentioned you went out, you you started, you got here August 2011. Two years later, you go on, you, you're on deployment. Yeah. Where do you go? Um, we went to, uh, we would go to United Arab Emirates. And then, nice. so that's where I was. I was yeah. over in like Abu Dhabi and Dubai yeah. area, which is not bad, you know. No. But that's like, you know, um, like, uh, that's kind of like where we would, because the AWACS, you know, you're like flying all over the place. So, yeah. yeah. Would, the, would you just jump on the plane and fly at AWAC all the way? You, you, or do you like fly out normally and then you jump on the plane when you're out there? Um, yeah, we flew out there like sort of like on a commercial sort yeah. of thing. And then we, um, yeah. And then once you're out there, you have like sort of a, a schedule and a grind that you have. And it was like six months the first, I did two and I did like a six month and a, and a five month. Uh-huh. Um, the six month was wild, you know, cause that was another thing where you're just like, man, six months at that time. Being now 10 years later or so, I'm thinking like six months flies by, you know, like nothing. But back in my 20s, like, and I was there like 20, like my late 20s even, like six months felt like a huge chunk of your life. You know, it felt like a big, big old chunk. And, uh, but it was cool. Like deployed life was really, was really cool. Like I, uh, looking back, it was hard when I was there, but looking back, I look on it, like look back on it fondly. And like, it was really good times and good memories and a lot of great people. That's yeah. one thing I miss about the military or the air force. The most would just be some of my, like a lot of my friends and people and in the military, people don't stay anywhere for long. They're always like, right. So a lot of the people that I was in the air force with, like have gone on, moved in separate directions. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What, uh, what, I mean, were you able to kind of like explore, travel, ride a camel? Like, um, what the were you first, doing in Dubai? my first deployment, I was a little, I was a little disgruntled because, you know, we could, uh, there was Dubai Marathon going on at the time. And I remember being like, you'd have these days of a couple of days where you wouldn't be doing, you'd just be there, like, yeah. you know, working out, killing time. And then you'd go, then you'd get on your flight schedule and you'd fly, fly, fly. Yeah. Um, and I remember being off for the Dubai Marathon. But for whatever reason, I think maybe someone had gotten in trouble off base. And so there were some rules at that time yeah. that had us on lockdown. Just timing happened to be when I was there. And so I remember being there and I couldn't go do the Dubai Marathon. And I was like, I don't know when I like Dubai, but I, realistically, there's so many places I want to go in the world that like, I'm not going to go back to Dubai. Like right. that'd be very low on my list. Um, it's very cool. But like, I would just like, there's a million other places I want to see on the world. So I don't see myself ever going back there. So I I look at that one kind of like, like, dang, I I missed that cool opportunity, but it's also going to change like between now 10 years ago to now. I mean, that city's like changed so much. Right. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, they have so much money. They, they make it rain every day at four o'clock. Yeah. They just do it. And they're building all those like futuristic buildings and they just had the Dubai marathon just happened here recently. And it actually was the highest, was it broke New York City's record uh, for the most, like really? the big, largest marathon ever in the world? Why well, didn't know? I would never would have guessed that. I think everything in Dubai and and United Arab Emirates, they just go like they want everything. They want to go big on everything, right? Yeah. Like everything wants to be. They want it to be the biggest in the world, right. and yeah. But uh, yeah, just recently that broke New York wow. City's record, and New York City I think had like the top three like most participants yeah. like in marathons over several years. Yeah. Um, but Dubai actually now has the, that record. Have you done New York yet? I've done New York uh, three times. Okay. Yeah. New York's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, any more deployments since then? No. After that one, I just did another one. Um, it basically, I came back for a year and then I went on another deployment. And uh, it was a lot. Of, it was essentially the same thing. It was funny. Like I went back and I ended up being in the exact same um container we lived in like shipping containers with like air conditioning and stuff yeah and i was in the exact same shipping container on my second deployment as i was on the first one in my exact same bed and room and everything so it was just like a like a year away and then come back and i was back in the same routine yeah um the mission like everything had kind of changed at that time like what we were doing over there but like it was still you know same old same routine mostly for a deployment but yeah so when when do you um I guess, when do you get out and decide that I want to live and I want to stay in Oklahoma City? Um, I did, so I did a one year, I had originally signed up for uh, the uh, four years and I did a one year extension. So I was in from for five years in the Air Force. I did a one year extension because you could do four or six initially. I did four and I did a one because I didn't really know like if I wanted to, I was kind of on the fence if I wanted to stay in or get out. Mm-hmm. I decided to get out. I just felt like I wasn't in like a good headspace and I was going through some stuff. And then, 
Um, so I got out and, you know, when you get out of the Air Force, they, the military is really cool about like, they really want to get you prepared to get out because it's a transition. Okay. You like, you don't think like in, in four years, you develop all these habits and you have all these like expect, like things are, you expect things a certain way. And there's like, even come back from a deployment in, in my deployment, I feel like weren't as hard of a deployment as it's a sacrifice because you're away from home. Right. But I know like other branches have like way tougher deployment settings. Like ours was pretty like pretty great, honestly, relaxed, yeah. pretty relaxed. And, um, but even that, you know, you come back and there's like these weird things that you, you know, just like something like, you know, like standing in lines is weird, you know, and you, you have to get used to that again, or like little, little stupid things that are like very trivial that yeah. aren't anything, but you're like, you get kind of like agitated, like, like, Oh my God, like what is, you know, like what's going on? Like right. it used to be cause in the military, it's like way more orderly. Oh, well, people being rude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're just kind of like, respect. you're just kind of like, okay, like you got to get used to that. But, um, so the military does a great job at like getting you prepared to get back into the, into the world. And like, they want you to have kind of savings and they, you have like a plan. You're supposed to have like a whole, like, like plan when you get out. Um, yeah. so I had this whole plan and I had a, even a backup plan for that. And then, um, when I got out within like six months, the first plan was upside down. And then the, the other plan was, uh, also like really quickly, uh, the backup plan was not structurally sound really quickly fell apart. So, um, my move and like my, uh, all the things I kind of wanted to do, like, uh, didn't really happen. Uh -huh. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have like really great, uh, community from the years I'd already been in Oklahoma and I was able to like, you know, find work. And I still had like really great, um, great friends around me. Um, I've always been in my life. I feel like I've always been blessed with like, I've had great people around me. Yeah. And so, um, I was able to kind of like stay afloat. I ended up staying back and, um, started working at, I worked in a food truck for a little bit, a uh, snow s'more with my yeah, friend Leo yeah. uh -huh. and Allison. And uh, that was really fun. Do they still have that? They do. I, oh man, I feel so bad. I, I needed it. It was an Airstream, wasn't it? Yeah, they had that. Yeah. It was an awesome Airstream, man. It was yeah. really cool. They still have the Airstream. I still okay. see them pop up every once in a while, but I know that they're, I think Leo's trying to, I think Leo and Allison are trying to open up like a, I don't want to say this on the pod if I'm wrong, but <laughs> I think they, they yeah, open up a brick and mortar. I think right? they're trying yeah. to do the brick and cool. mortar. Last time I, last time I talked to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. But then I worked in that for a little bit and then I was able, like, um, I started working at Red Coyote and then uh, that was really great. And then during all that time in my, in the Air Force and stuff, I think like first thing I got to Oklahoma was like, I had to find my running, my running uh, environment, <laughs> had to find my running peeps uh, when I got here. And um, Red Coyote had opened within like almost like within a year or so of what, like it was still a very new store when I got to Oklahoma yeah. and I remember finding the website and then like started going to the pack pine runs okay. and um I met John and Burke and uh John's brother Jeff they were some of my like first friends here in Oklahoma so yeah. like uh, I can like remember back to those early days but they were able to like I started working at the store after the food truck and it was really great mm -hmm. um and then uh, I met John through the energy, uh, energy FC somewhere along the way too. And then like, uh, John made me that offer a couple years ago and yeah. worked with him for last four years and now back at Red Coyote. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, th all right, let's talk about the running then. Cause like you just, ref you referenced obviously, you know, kind of that, you kind of find your group, you find your core, like, oh, yeah. these are my people, right? When you get to Oklahoma, but obviously running is a core, um, need and, and love of yours from a very young age. Right. Where's it start? Where, where did I start? Yeah, when does running start? Like, cause it's not, when you're a kid, like you're playing soccer, you're playing football, you're playing yeah. baseball, whatever. Like not a lot of people I like, don't think. Yeah, I liked people. all those sports uh, yeah. growing up. Like I did play, um, I liked bas outside of running, I really liked basketball. Um, and I remember in high school at one point, like I sprained my ankle and my track coach got mad at me and then I stopped playing basketball. And I really, yeah. sometimes I look back and I'm like, I wish I would have kept playing cause I like it. But now when I play, I feel so weird. Like my body feels so awkward. Um, but like, uh, track and running or not track, but running, um, cross country and track and stuff, uh, running really started back when I was like probably nine, nine or 10. Okay. And my dad, it was when we still lived in Laredo and my dad being a Marine was always waking up doing the PT, you yeah. know, always get, always staying ready for his, like his tests and like just staying in shape. And I remember my brother was in high school and he played football and my older brother was like a phenomenal athlete. Um, could do every sport. And he, uh, but you know, he's in high school. He doesn't want to get up at, 
at five in the morning to run with my Marine, my psycho Marine dad. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. he's like, he's like, uh, I felt bad for my dad. Like I yeah. kind of felt bad. And so like, I just kind of volunteered, you know, and then my dad would wake me up and we'd go out running like every day um, when cool. I was young. And when I did play other sports, um, outside of that, I was always able to like, like I could always fall back on running and that like, I, it would make up for my lack of skills <laughs> cause I could run. So like yeah. that always kind of helped me. Um, and I think I ran my first half marathon was when I was like, like also like that same year, like 10 or 11. Um, some people would say that was too young, but I, back then that, that was never like, no one was talking about that. Um, but, and I don't think it was too young cause I'm still running and I feel good. Yeah. Um, but we ran this cool marathon in Laredo, Texas, and it literally ran across the border. So it started in Laredo and it ran into Mexico It finished in Mexico. So like that was my first half marathon ever, my longest distance. And then, yeah. And then I just, you know, I ran all through high school and I really loved it. I feel like I always loved it more than everyone else around me. Um, and I was pretty diehard about it. And then, but it was one of those things where like, I was always like pretty good, but I was never like, I'm never like a, I'm never like the fastest guy anywhere. So like, um, but I'm, I just really love it. And that's always, I think what's gotten me is just like my passion for it. And, um, and you know how running is, is like, just cause you don't get first, it, like the measure of success is way different in running. You know, like yeah. if I got like eighth place in conference meet, I was like, that's very good. But like, you know, that's not like a, <laughs> it's not like anything to like, no one would understand. Like you didn't win, like what, right. but yeah. So I kept running and running. So, th so in a sense, like running for me has always been like my lifeline. That's where I find my that's where I find my community. That's what's helps me get, um, that's always like my advantage. Like even in, in the uh, air force, like I feel like, uh, running afforded me some cool opportunities. Um, cause just doing good on, in running and the PT test, like put me in some other, allow, open some doors in other areas for me. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've just been doing it ever since, man. Well, I mean, it's kind of special to have those like running with dad. Yeah. Right. You look yeah. back, you're like at the time you're like, yeah, this is cool. And you know, and I'm like, you know, you might've felt bad about, you might've felt bad that your dad, your older brother wouldn't go. So you're like, I'll do it. But when you look back, you're like, so fortunate to have those moments. Yeah. It was cool, man. Right. Yeah. Very fond memories of that with my dad. Yeah. What, uh, what, what's kind of like, what was the workouts? I mean, his dad going out, like, is he doing just four miles every day and then hitting, he was hitting, doing hitting like pushups. He was that. always getting ready. Yeah. We would do pushups and stuff after yeah. cause he was always, it was always for the Marine fitness test, you know? So it was like, we were always doing kind of that. Yeah. Um, so we would run three miles usually. And then, um, he would like, we would run three miles pretty much uh, every day. And then we would get, we would run this 10 K um, every once in a while, like the Turkey trot or like, and we built on those days we'd do like a 10 K. Um, but I remember being like the philosophy back then with my dad, it was like, you run, you, you can serve your energy. And then you do these like all out, like near the end, you just do this like all out push. Um, that was kind of how, how we trained when I was a kid. That's all I remember. It wasn't anything complicated or anything, uh, super, um, methodical or anything it was like very much like you run and then when you're near the end you just you just go like as hard as you got yeah so like i remember even the like where i lived in laredo like the little block like the finish where we would we would like really start to haul haul ass and whatever and i remember being like where i would really try to beat my dad and i think he was always just letting me but like i remember like when i first started like well i'm like trying so hard and like he lets me like you know edge ahead of him you know so it was like i mean that was cool you know <laughs> That is cool, right? And, yeah. and also, like, it's not, you know, it's not now to to us who just, you run a lot more than I do, but even for me, who's just kind of still early in my running, like, three miles is, is just like, oh, I'm just going to go run three miles. Right? Yeah. Whereas someone listening to this could be like, three miles, man, I can't even do 100 meters. Yeah. But when you do that reps and you build up, you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's 30 minutes or it's 20 minutes, or whatever right. it is now, like, I, it, it's... Um, like I got to do four miles today and I'm just, it's not even a thought. Yeah. You're it's just like, ah, like, oh, that's like an easy day. Miles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting, but like you didn't, you know, you, the 10 K was, I guess the most of you guys did. You didn't mm -hmm. really, and obviously you build up to the half marathon, but you know, people listening, like it doesn't have to be, you know, 10 K every day and like a half marathon. On the no, weekend. Like, no. Just get your run in. Cause yeah. I know you've been keeping up. I mean, you're, you're kind of going on how many days now running every day? Yeah. I got my, I got a current, I got a streak that I started, uh, in December, December of 2020. And I, so I think I'm coming up on, I'm coming up on 1200 days. I think I'm like 11, 1160 something. I believe every, every once in a while, I like check back in and I, I update it and I see where I'm at, but yeah, I've run every day for like over three years now. Um, and I haven't been injured. Um, I've been sick a couple of times, but I've got it done. 
on days where I would take the day off, I only go out and run like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, a mile and a half, two miles, whatever. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can take a day off and there is, there is a lot to be said for like getting rest. And and so I try to do that, but if I'm able to get a good night's sleep and get meals in, and then I, I run an easy day of like 10 to 15 minutes on days where I really just don't want to get out and do it. Yeah. I think it has like a lot of, um, it's good for me discipline wise. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of benefits to that, but then, uh, yeah, it's fun. Just been compounding on it. It's been cool. So, yeah. yeah. What do you, you kind of touched on it briefly earlier of like what running does for you Let's dive into that, like mental headspace, fitness. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, running such a, you know, if your body can do it, most, yeah. most people after they blow their knees out or they don't think they can do running anymore, they go to cycling. All right. Or they'll right. migrate to something, which is great. And it's aerobic fitness. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah, I mean, for someone who's been running since, you know, they were nine years old, like, what does running do for you? And how has that evolved over oh, the time? Shoot, too? man. Uh, I'll say like, so um, off and on through my life when I've struggled with running, it's more so, it's not burnout of running. It's usually I was, uh, I know like what you just said, kind of like a lot of people like to run to relieve stress or get in a good headspace. I was finding a lot of times in certain 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 little chunks of my life, like what I would notice for myself was like, I would have a hard time running when I wasn't in a good headspace. And that was when I would have a hard time getting out or I would take considerable time off if I was struggling like um, in my head. Like, so I couldn't go out and run if I had like a, it wasn't like I was relieving stress. It was like more like, it would almost be compounded stress. So the thing with the, where they're getting back to the streak, I feel like the streak is kind of, helps me take that edge off where I'm like focused on this other side goal of like keeping the streak alive. And, uh, that way I can get out still, even if I'm not in a good headspace, it's kind of helping me develop like, like, okay, now I can run to relieve some stress. Cause I'm, I'm actually doing it to not to relieve stress, but to keep the streak alive. It's like a separate goal. Um, if I'm doing it to be like, I need to get out and like, and it does relieve stress, even if I don't think it is like, uh-huh. it's doing other things chemically for you. But, um, yeah. I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> the other question I had too is kind of, is kind of parallel to this is like, what does running mean to you? Oh man, that's tough. Um, for me, it's just like, like I said earlier, it's definitely like a lifeline for me. It's like church. It's like, uh, it's kind of like my community. Um, it's my escape, um, sanctuary, you know, but, uh, also like, it's not just an escape too. Like I want to have it where it's like, um, like, uh, I want to, I want to help others find it too. And like have, and build, build on that community aspects that I love about it. Um, which is, which has been able to do like at Mint with Monday's miles and then working at a running store like Red Coyote, which is all about like community centric. Um, and then even like my smaller group of friends that I run with in the mornings, like, um, when I can get up, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the best morning person, early. <laughs> but Luis is one of those. Yeah. Shout out Luis. Yeah. Shout out Luis, man. Luis is so consistent. That guy like has like, he's very like, by, like he's strict, like he's doing the same like blocks every week, like to the T. Um, Does yeah. not surprise he's me a workhorse, man. I yeah. love that guy. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. What is it to me? I mean, like it's, it's so much like it's, it's very too. It's really at this point in my life. Um, I used to be like, uh, my younger days when people would bring up running to me and, and you just be like, he's the, he's that runner guy or whatever. Um, I was kind of like, well, I like a lot of stuff. Cause I do like, I'm into a lot of stuff besides running. Um, but at this point now, almost being 40 and I'm still been doing it at this point, it is very much ingrained into my, like into my being. So like I, now I try not to like duck away from that. Um, I can still be like, I still have a lot of interests outside of running and a lot, a lot of passions, but, um, now I'm not so much like skeptical about, Um, it being like the one thing that defines me. Um, I know it's not the only thing, but it it is definitely a huge part of the definition of, of myself. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, right? You can take a lot of kind of pride and confidence knowing that like, you know, running is, it's a huge passion of mine. I love to do it. People know me for that. But also because you know, deep down that it doesn't define you, there's a lot of like stress relief there as well. And for sure, you love other things. You mentioned movies earlier and other, you know, obviously you've got a great, the dogs and all the other stuff. Oh, my too. dogs. Like, yes. You know, like yes, sir. That's, that's a huge thing too. But, um, when does it start getting like going from, I guess, a, just a, I love running to fitness to like, I'm going to compete. Um, and I'm good. And I'm going to start winning. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, so I have kind of like a, so there's some of these big marathons, um, depending on which ones you run. Like if you're running like, you know, New York city or, a 
or Boston or something like that. Like I'm just, I'm never going to win it. You're winning internally. Right. It's the internal battle, right? Um, the competitive yeah. side of me, like locally, like I do like to, to compete, but now I'm like a little, this is not an excuse. Like uh, I don't, I still believe, cause I'm still, I feel, still feel like I'm getting better all the time. But, um, you know, locally now, like I'm one of the older guys, you know, when I was in my twenties, when I first got here, it was not. And so there's a lot of like, yeah. There's a lot of hot feet out there that can like throw down some some quick 5Ks, and I'm I'm kind of like I like to do a good 5K when I can, and I know what kind of I can what I can do, but I'm definitely more in like the the longer stuff nowadays. Well, and I guess there's there's seasons for it, and ages for it. It seems like you're sound, you know you go into the longer stuff, you're also transitioning to the coaching side too. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Um, I would say like. Yeah, like I, I think the what I want to do is just always be my best self. Like when I'm going out to run, when I get in my competitive mode, I'm still just really much, very much competing with myself with the understanding that like, I'm not going to get an OTQ or I'm not, I maybe won't win a race. But if, if there is a chance that I can win a race, like I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. Like, and I know usually just um, beforehand, like depending on the race I'm running, if I got a shot, yeah. um, like my, my marathon PR, I, I was out in Tunnel Marathon in Washington, much smaller marathon, but you know, still like a lot of people out there. Still the same distance. And I was able to like that was one where I was able to kind of like throw down, and I, I got like I think I got like fourth overall, and I ran my PR, and I was like I was very very happy with that and proud. Um, and so like yeah, that that's the best way I like to look at it. Um, when it's time to throw down, and I always want to be ready, and that's one thing with the streak is like. Uh, I know a lot of people, they're like, I want to peak at this time. I like to just always stay kind of like right below peak so I can always like, like turn it on when I want, you know, that's, that's how I like to be with running. Yeah. It's a great way to look at it. And I think it just builds, you know, obviously, like you said earlier, you haven't been injured. Yeah. You know, in touch wood, you haven't been injured uh, and keep, keep doing that. But also it's, it's keeping that consistently going. And even like you, even if you, like you just said, it's only 10, 15 minutes on off days. Yeah. And you don't feel great and get out run in a little slower place, mm -hmm. take the dog or like clear your head or, you know, like get some fresh air, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it serves such a great purpose outside of the competitive juices. It's like, I'm going to go destroy the red bird when it comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, what, or, you know, whatever it is out of Lake Heffern or a trail run. I saw you at that trip. Rose. Rose yeah. Rose Rock. Rose Rock. Rose, Rock. Rose Rock's awesome. Um, yeah. You know, it's just like little things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, or if you're pacing someone for the marathon, right? Like, yeah. Didn't you pace Kristen this year? Uh, oh, I paced, team? yeah. So in, in Memorial, Actually, I ended sorry. up running with Jonathan Morris and, yeah. uh, and Christy Coleman. Yeah. And so we, I didn't go into it thinking I was going to pace her, but I was coming off Boston and then, um, I didn't know who was running the full, but when I, when I found Christy and well, after the split, when we split from the half marathon, yeah. uh, Christy and, and Jonathan Morris, my teammates, and I just started like running with them and I'm like, I'm like, heck yeah, Christy's going to. Christy's trying to throw down. So like, I'm going to just try to, I'm just trying to try to like help her out as well, however I can. And of course near the, on class in, you know, she's like, a, she took off and like, they just dusted me. Right. And, uh, but like helping her get to, if I helped at all, uh, yeah. I think she would have, she didn't need my help. I was just right. there for, for moral support. But yeah, it was, it was awesome to see. And then we, we, uh, well, me and a couple friends paced to my friend Addie in Chicago in October and we, we got, she got under three hours and it's a really good feeling. Pacing is like a really good feeling, uh, um, if you can help someone, yeah. they're still doing it themselves. You know, that's always the case. But right. Well, and I, I want to dive into that too, because I, when I train, I go on my own. I never run with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's just easier to just go out. And I to run at all different times of the day. So it's just like, hey, you know, like it's never like, you know, with a pack or whatever. Yeah. Um, however, I have ran a couple of times with friends in races. Yeah. And I just, and they hadn't been planned. It's just, I met them at the start line. I'm like, oh, what's your pace? Oh, it's some other yeah. one together, right? Yeah. And I know it helps. Yeah. I know it does, right? And I know that, like, if I need to go set a PR or something, I need to go run with someone. Right. Because there's, like, that internal mental battle of, like, I'm not letting you run away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, talk a little bit about that to, like, you know, to talk, talk about Addy and, and shout out Addy Ryan, who's yeah. crushing it. Um, or Addy Rosecrans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Officially Addy Rosecrans. Officially Addy Rosecrans. Preferably Addy Ryan. Kept <laughs> <Addie> Ryan. <laughs> uh, to act the name. Yeah, shout out Cody too. Yeah, Cody Rosecrans. Cody. Uh, also a military guy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about that. Like, what's that like to go re in a, in a, in a group and go pace Addy to see her win? And I remember, remember seeing the photos from that, like doing her yeah. first sub three in Chicago. Yeah. It was just like so cool. It was, uh, man, it's cool. It's like, um, so with Addy, it's like, that was like my whole goal was like, I need, we just need to get Addy under three hours. So like, I'm like locked into that. And so I find that like running the pace I was running, um, which like, that's like, 
it's moving for me too. Like the pace that she's trying to run, you know? So like, um, I think it was easy. It was crazy how, it, how it works something in the, in the brain. But like, I felt like running that pace, helping Addy out, it was much easier for me than if I was just doing that pace by myself. Yeah. Um, what is that mile pace? Uh, for Addy, she would have been like, she ran like a two, I might be a little off, like 258 something. Okay. Um, but it would have been, I think, I think you're at like 650s. Okay. 650s, I, I believe would be the pace for the full. Uh-huh. Um, I'd have to check my math on that, but <laughs> I'll do that while, yeah. you, keep, while you can keep um, the funny part about what you were saying too, is if when I do see some of my friends like in Boston or something, um, uh, you know, some of my friends, there is some times where your competitive side kicked in and you have like, that would be a good example where you're asking about the competitive side of it. Right. Um, there are some times where you're at these big races and you see your buddies and you're like, we're around the same pace. So you want to, you want to run together, but then you're also in this environment where you're like, if you're not feeling good and you're running with a, a buddy who's like right around the same pace, it's kind of like, sometimes you're like, I wish they would either drop me or like, I need to get away from them. Like, right. uh, even if they are your friend and it's helping, like sometimes like my competitive size, like, like now I want to just lock in and like kind of just, you know, do my own thing. Like, so if, 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 if I'm not feeling good and they're running just great, I want them to just get away from me or like, I want to go like, I want to make a move and get away from them, but yeah. it's weird how that works. It's not, it's nothing personal. It's more like a competitive, it's an internal competitive, yeah. <laughs> competitive thing. Uh, you were right. Six, six fifty paces, sub yeah. three, which is insane. Like there's a yeah. very few amount of people who, who in the world who can run a sub three marathon. Right? And I remember it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Addie was like, you know, she, uh, the buildings in Chicago throw off your paces, like oh, your really? watch, your watch. So like, I'm we keep telling her like, don't look at your watch. Cause she would look at her watch and she thought near the end, why do they throw it off? It's like the way that things ping in the satellites or oh, whatever. Okay. Gotcha. So you're, sometimes yeah. your watch will show a pace that's off. Yeah. You're still clocking the same paces, but like right. your watch, when you look down at what pace you're going, it'll be off until the end when it, okay. when it computes. But like, I remember being like telling Addie, like, like stop looking at your watch. Cause like she, she looked down and she thinks she's running an eight minute pace and she's not, she's flying. So she's, but she's like, oh, I've dropped to eight minutes. I don't feel good. And now I'm running eight minutes and like, yeah. this is really bad. I'm like falling apart. I'm like, no, like you're still good. Like we're, we're running just fine. Like we're so on the same pace. How are you tracking it then? I'm just, it's more like off a of field and okay. I can just tell like, yeah. you can even tell in those bigger races, like yeah. if you're getting passed in waves, then you're dropping off. Yes. But you know, she's still running fine. We're staying with everyone. Like that we're staying with the same group. And like, yeah. so, uh, yeah. And you know, she crushed it, man. And, but she was like, she, she was like that hurt a lot, <laughs> but I think she, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was awesome though. It was really good, really good experience out there. Yeah. yeah. What's your PR? My PR is in that tunnel marathon yeah. in Washington. And I ran like a, I want to say it was like, it was like 240, high 243 or low 244. Dude. Yeah. Flying. Yeah. It was cool. When was that? How old were you when you did that? That was August of 21. I went out with uh, Carly from, recent. yeah, we went out with Addy and Cody and Jake Mayer and uh, a couple other from yeah. our group. Jeff, uh, no, Jeff Beck wasn't on that trip. We had a big group and then yeah. Carly's from out there. Carly from Wahoo is, okay. is from out in Washington. She was kind of like our host. And um, I want to give everyone a shout out. Jody, uh, Shane, Kira. I think I got everyone. Are um, you part of that Wahoo group or the ultra running group or whatever that is? Yeah, Wahoo. Um, Wahoo I definitely, yeah. yeah. Is separate to the ultra thing, right? But there's an ultra race team you guys are part of too, right? Yeah, well, what oh. They, they are part of. They have Wahoo running and then Michelob Ultra. That's right. And Wahoo is very involved with Team Ultra. Okay. And that's because Carly and Christy are the coaches okay. of Team Ultra. I don't know all the ins and outs of, but yeah, they, they coach for Team Ultra and then they yeah, own Wahoo, Wahoo and that's yeah. their thing that they started. And um, Wahoo is awesome. That's a great group. Um, I try to be in as involved in as many yeah. running groups as I can. And uh, yeah, I, I love I love Wahoos. love my yeah. Wahoos. Should have Carly on the podcast and the team. Yeah, Carly and Christy, man, they're, they're, they're amazing. Message. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out. <laughs> TBD. We had Carly uh, and Christy on the Beer Hot podcast, and they're they're great. they got great stories, man. Let's yeah. do it. Um, all right, you have uh, you talked about new running. Did we talk about NYC? No, we didn't. What's that like? Um, NYC is is amazing. It is yeah. huge. It is the biggest. You know, it is so much bigger feeling than everything else. Like it's almost big to the point where it's it's a little stressful. Um, logistically, it's kind of just wild how they even like. I feel like riding out to Staten Island to the start. Yeah. takes like two hours, you know, like you ride out there, it's like the longest bus ride ever. Yeah. Um, in Boston, you ride out to Hopkinton and it's a long bus ride. The New York bus ride is like way longer. Yeah. Um, and then New York is just brutal. Like there's certain parts of the, not brutal, that's not the right word, but it is like, it, you get very excited at certain areas, like mile eight or nine in Brooklyn is like 
so um, lit, like it is so hype that like if you I look down and I'm like, all of a sudden I'm like, dude, I'm running like a I'm running like a five fifteen. <laughs> I am flying right. Yeah, now. I'm like this is not good. Like you know it's a mile eight and you're running like a five fifteen pace and I'm like <laughs> I'm not fit to do this. Like this is not a good. Right. I need to t- I need to rein it in. This I need to rein it really in. hurt me at mile 16, 17, 18 later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is a, it is amazing. New York is amazing. I still love Boston's my favorite of of the of all the major ones I've run. Um, Boston to me just is like. I know some people, there are, there's always the debate like Boston or New York or like um, Boston or Chicago, but Boston to me, just the heritage and the, um, the way the city treats the, the marathon with such reverence is like, yeah. New York is so massive that even though the marathon is humongous, the city, some, there's people in New York that don't even know what's going on in certain areas, you know? Yeah. Um, in Boston, like the whole city is like all about that. Like okay. the whole day is devoted to this race. Everyone treats you like, Everyone in the city treats you like a celebrity, like no matter who you are, if you're running, it's like, yeah. they're gonna treat you like you're this, um, I don't know, Boston just has some magic to it, to okay. me, but. <laughs> April 15th, so it's coming up. Yeah, right? yeah. And you're training for it. Mm-hmm. Are you going out with a big group again? Um, we're going out, definitely a lot of people from Oklahoma going always. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm going, I'm going by myself, but like okay. I'll, I'll get up with all like the Oklahoma crew out there. Yeah. Um, lots of red County racing. There's some lots from Wahoo, um, lots from my like smaller crew. Um, but yeah, it's, we always have, Oklahoma always has a great showing out in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, with you kind of being back at Red Coyote and back in the mix and, you know, there every day sort of, and just kind of being fully and a lot more involved than you have been when, when you were at Mint, Mm -hmm. going out to Boston, I mean, is this a personal trip for you as like a more? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Not work related, personal trip. Um, you know, I still, I'm still repping my race team, but like, uh, definitely, Definitely just, you know, just for me. But yeah. yeah. And, and this, uh, do you have any goals for it or you just kind of just... I, goes? with Boston every year, Boston's the only race that I will, cons- other than Memorial when I, like, but Boston's really the only race that I'll, like, I'll go to every year just as long as I can make it, I'll yeah. keep going. Um, so, uh... What's the cutoff time now for your age? <laughs> when I turned 35, I got that little extra five yeah. minutes and that's been nice because I've been getting, I've been getting like faster Close. too. And then as I've been getting faster, I got five extra minutes and now I like, now I got that gap, like Loads a lot more it. open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I want to just, every year I go to Boston, I just want to run faster than the year before. I just want to run my fastest Boston time. So a marathon PR would be ideal. So if I could hit like low two forties, I'd be super stoked. Yeah. But you know, B goal would just be like run my fastest Boston time, which would be like right under 250 and I would be happy with that. Yeah. You're not speaking the same language as me right now. I mean, I know running's the same for everybody, but you're yeah. running a lot. For, I mean, I'm like, I, I, I also obviously have my race coming up soon and I'm interested to see, and, and it's different, right? Cause it's yeah. like 50K or whatever. And I, I, people ask me like, oh my God, it's an ultra. It's so, the ultra world is so different to the marathon world. Right. Cause the marathon world is like, what's your time? Yeah. Right? And everyone's really focused around that. And it's like, clean type yeah. like clean cut running dominate yep the ultra world is just like a bunch of just grungy grizzly people who just want to go be in the countryside for all day yeah it doesn't care how long it takes you it's running up and down hills you know and this one's in Stillwater, and it's just like dude it, mid-south is I awesome i love that yeah right? like i love that i don't like people but yeah i i am focused on my time because it's back to an internal battle and you have internal and goals the guy who won it last year, I think, ran it in like three and a half hours. Was it Eric London? Or Maybe, yeah. Like just I think Noah won it one year. Pace. Yeah, I crossed the halfway point of that. You know? like, <laughs> but it's fun to do, and I not that I won't won't do a half marathon or do you know the the Memorial Marathon, like. But it's just for me, who isn't a runner growing up, to go do like the, the ultra world, and it's like it's a few more miles than you know, it's thirty one miles, right? Yeah. So it's not like a massive, significant like I. Sarah Akins, who yeah. does like 50 mile and a hundred mile amazing. races. Yeah. That, that is insane. Yeah. Um, and maybe one day I'll be, I'll have screws loose in my head and I can think I'll go full day. Hey man, that'll get, do yeah. that. But like, the, oh yeah, the, it's, it's so different to compare those worlds. Yeah. Right? And I'll be with, I'm, I'm with you, Mike. I actually prefer the ultra world yeah. as you call it. Like that's where I would actually like to be. I like to, to get more as into you get that. Older, you'll go into that. Yeah. And, and right now for me, sometimes it's just like access and like, yeah. Uh, but like, I would like to get way more involved in that. And that's why like, like back when I wanted to move to Colorado, like I would just like to have, like, I would like to only do that. If I could only run trail, I would prefer that. Yeah. Um, but ultras, man, like, yeah, it's a different beast entirely. And it's a way more chill crowd. I like my, the first ultra I did midnight madness, Tulsa 50 miler. 
and I didn't know what I was getting into. And I remember going through like yeah. the first 20 feeling like pretty good. And then like 20 to 30 felt like total shit. Like, what did I do? Yeah. Yeah. And then like the last 10 miles, I started to kind of rally back. But um, those things, man, it's such a different beast. And we got a lot of like awesome ultra runners coming up around here. Like you said, Sarah, yeah. um, Nicole, obviously Camille. Yeah. Um, you yeah, have Camille, Camille's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> I know like we used to have like uh, I don't know if he still runs, but Nick Seymour, okay. um, uh, Matt Riley, those guys are like, yeah. yeah, I love, I love the ultra scene. It's just such like, um, did you, when you did that 50 mile, it, did you go to just such like, and, and I, I, I'd be interested to know your question, your answer on this. Like when you're, when you're like PRing your marathon, like obviously there, you go to the pain cave, it's a yeah. dark place, but it, is it a different dark place to where you went when you're in the 50? Yeah. The body is way more just like yeah. the, the pain, the pain is like, um, it's a much more dull pain. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't see the, you know, you have so much longer to go in the marathon, even as long as the marathon is, which is crazy. That's why ultras are so crazy. It's like yeah. marathon is so long. Um, but the marathon, you're really pushing that. You get into that red line pain, but like the, and you know, that it's going to come to an end. Yeah. But like the ultras, you don't really red line, but you have this like broken down pain that you just have to like that deal with. Uh, it's like, you're, you're not redlining, you're already broke. Yeah. Like, so you're just like, you're, you're just running broke. That's how I, that's how I would describe it for me anyways. Yeah. That, um, that makes a lot of sense. I guess. It, yeah. So, so the marathon pace is like a lung pain, yeah. like a deep breath. Like I'm pushing and gas, whatever the ma- Yeah. The ultra pain is like, my body is done. I've been yeah, running I remember, constantly for four hours or five hours or six, however long it takes you. Yeah. Like. I'm done. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's brutal. I remember doing, so we did uh there's a race around here called 24 the hard way. Okay. And I've done it. I did it three years, but um, one year I did it with my friend Epson okay. and it was Epson's first time. So he was going for a hundred and you know, you run as many laps as you can in 24 hours. So it's not like a, it's not like a hundred miler. It's more like a 24 hour road race would be like, yeah. how far can you go in 24 hours? This is just laps. Yeah. It's just one mile around bluff Creek on the paved loop. And dude, it used to be like that event, man. Like, uh, I think COVID is COVID kind of, do they still do it now? I think they still do it, but it's so much smaller back. Oh, I need to bring that back. It was, it was it's really incredible. growing in a cool way. Cause yeah. it was really growing into this way where it was almost like this little festival. Like, yeah. uh, you had that loop in Bluff Creek Just camp out, but yeah. I, yeah, I had a tent and we all had, people had tents up and then there was like a center part with the aid station that was every lap, lap and they had music and it was like this cool scene that I felt like you could really grow and it could really yeah. grow into this like really special thing. And it, it is really special. Yeah. still I just got you know like everything and just got tattered by right. the, by COVID but um I remember my buddy Epson like he was a uh, shout out Epson he um it was late and you know he's like he's like dude I want to take like a little nap I was like dude don't go in your tent yeah. if you lay down man yeah. like you're smoked yeah. and so he laid down and he stayed in there like he wanted to stay in there for like you know 30 minutes or something but it ended up being like an hour or two and I remember when he came out and it was, we're running around Bluff Creek and it was like three in the morning and it was foggy. And, um, I look up and Eves and he just looked like a, like all I see is his silhouette from like, you know, I was coming up on him from like probably 500 meters from the back. And he looks, I just see like a silhouette and he looks like, a, like a zombie. A he's got like his day. hood on, like, and he's just kind of like, yeah. like he's doing this real slow, like run with no arm movement hardly. And I was like, oh man, like poor guy. It was crazy. Did you stay up for a whole 20? Did you take a cat nap or did you just stay up for a whole No, I stayed up, man. I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to win. Um, I didn't end up winning, which is crazy to run that far and be short. I think I was short, like, uh, my buddy beat me by like two miles at the end. But he, um, uh, I ran the, that's the farthest I've ever run. So that was cool. A little victory in itself. Dude, but the 24 hour stuff is just yeah. like to mentally get your headspace around, like, I'm going to stay up and I'm going to yeah. run laps. Like, so we're, you know, hours. you know that Bluff Creek loop, Mike? Maybe. I don't Maybe. Know. It's just like a paved greenway loop, sort of. And it's Perfect. like a, a little right around a mile. Yeah. But, dude, I was so tired. I'm running and I'm so tired. Yeah. And you start to like hallucinate a little bit yeah. to where, like, I'd come up and you'd, you'd almost be dozing off while running. Uh-huh. And I would come up and I would be like, I think I missed that stop sign where I was supposed to turn right. Cause it, if you don't turn and yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't know if I'm on the loop anymore. And you're just going through these weird sort of like such a delirious place, delirious, man. Yeah. You know, you're like really depleted. Even if you're eating and stuff, it's like, yeah. you can't get enough. And 
Have you thought about doing that, uh, David Goggins, 48 hours? Have you done that yet? The four miles every four, to, four, miles every do, four hours for 48 hours. I definitely want to do that. Um, Jake, my buddy Jake Boswick has done that several times. Yeah. They have the, yeah, it's four miles, and then you take a break. Every four hours. That's yeah. awesome. For, for a weekend before I, but it's cool because Dave Goggins does it with everybody. He, like, yeah. He's like, this is the weekend we're going to do it. I start, I think he starts at like 4 a.m. He almost does like a live stream. Sort of, yeah. And my brother's done it, and he's like, "It's not, it's not that it's hard physically; it's just mentally, just like because you know, for you, you get up, you run four miles in you know thirty minutes or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Like, you know, it's every four hours. That doesn't seem hard. Yeah. But just like every four hours for forty eight hours. Yeah, you got to right? just do it again. And he was just, he's like, it wasn't. Yeah, he's, it wasn't that. It, it's just. It's crazy how much that parallels, how much that, like something like that, the, how much that parallels like everyday life right? and mo- the monotony of it. Yeah. I think that's the hard thing to wrap around. If you're doing that, even though it's 48 hours, just two days, there's this monotony aspect to it that is like really hard to wrap your mind around. And that's like one of the craziest things about like life in general is just like, how do you find meaning in the, mono- the monotonous, right? Like how do you find your purpose and like your, how do you stay motivated in monotonous? Yeah like routine, you know? I just Googled it. It's coming up. It's actually uh, March 20, starting Friday, March 22nd at 8 p.m. You going to do it? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) I just committed to it. Is that on a Thursday or Friday? Friday. So it's in two weeks. Dude, I'm going to, I'll do it. Right? So yeah, yeah, so so March 20, so 3, 22, 24. So yeah, it's a Friday. You start at 8 p.m. Yeah. Finish Sunday at 8 p.m. Let's go, man. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> that's, I that's cool, what man. I, I knew it was coming up. I was like, I swear it's in March. Yeah. Uh, 8 p.m. Okay. Eight, yeah, every four. Yeah, you just set your alarm, right? Yeah. Just like, that's, man, I said, let's go for it. All right. Yeah. Do you, is it like a virtual thing or like it's just it's just I, for yeah, honor bragging rights? I think it's just like, I mean, obviously, if you're around, you yeah. live close to people, you can probably get together. I mean, my, my brother had a friend, him and his friend stayed at my parents' house. Yeah. And they just did it t- together. That's fun, man. For 48 hours, you just hang out. I would like it. That would be cool to get like a group of buddies That would together, be sick. Yeah, right? you do almost like a camp out experience the and then you're chilling, you're yeah. chilling in the in the four hour gap. You're just, you yeah. can take a nap or you can just chill and, and drink some beers. We or got like, two weeks to plan this. Let's yeah. put it together. Let's That'd be awesome, man. Um, get some people in to do it. <laughs> uh, all right, finishing up. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your dogs. Oh man, where do I begin? Yeah. What do you want to know about them? I mean, the majestic animals, the, the panda, foxes, panda foxes, Siberian huskies, yeah. side sisters. Yeah. Now these are my, my girls, Rocky and Zazie. Uh, probably we walk around this neighborhood a lot, right around, right around the, the hall of fame here, but, um, they're incredible. Uh, Rocky's my, my older girl. I've had her since, um, early my first, right after my first deployment, I got her. Um, she is like very stoic. She is, a she loves people. She's sweet. She doesn't make any noise. She sheds like a maniac. I save her. I save her her shedding hair yeah. in, a, in a little trash bag. Um, I'm gonna make something one day with it. Um, Zazi is my younger one. I got her at the the pandemic uh, when it kicked off, and she is like a she is a got a really silly personality. She's really like really childish. Um, she loves Rocky a lot. She's like obsessed with Rocky and only wants to play with Rocky. And uh, she's like my shadow at the apartment. She follows me around everywhere. But man, they're there, it's such a rewarding thing to have dogs, man. Like I swear, like, yeah. um, I don't know what I would have done without Rocky all these years. And then, um, Rocky's so great that I was like, I need to get, I want to have another one. So I got, I, I adopted Zazie from okay humane and, uh, yeah, dude, they're like the best, they're like the best part of my life for sure. Dogs yeah. are, like, <laughs> I don't know where I'd be without mine. They're yeah, the man. Greatest things ever. Um, do you take her to, do you take it to Barquet? I think I asked you that on the podcast. No, pod. no. So I, so I just started shout out to the dog house, um, dog house, OKC. Um, they did have a spot in Midtown, which just closed. They have a spot right next to Lake Hefner and I've started taking them there and they're getting like, they haven't really, they've only socialized with themselves. Like once yeah. they're seven and four, about yeah. to be seven and five. And so they've only socialized around themselves. They're kind of super timid, but slowly they've been going to the dog house. Cool. It's been amazing to have them with Sherry at the dog house. And like, 
they've taken full care of them. And, and the, the thing I love is like they separate, they set, they separate them by temperament. Yeah. So once oh. we get through, right. So like Sevy's the big one. She's like among all these young little docile, like chill dogs. Yeah. She's perfect for her. Once I think they'll get a more like used to it. Greg's has all the energy in the world and she just wants to jump around, but they want to be together. Like yeah. they've got a lot of like. They're best friends. They're best friends. Right. And that, which makes a lot of sense. So yeah. I think it will be great to like want, get through like a solid, probably six months of them just going three times a week or stay in the night or whatever it is just to get them used to it yeah and then i'll be like let's go to bar cave. let's go to bar cave, man but i also like i don't it because they haven't socialized much and i, I walk them twice a day but yeah. it's obviously on the leash like i don't know if they'd listen to me if i'm like hey come here like, at bar cave? It's just like oh no. yeah man it's cool you know, like i need it's, to figure that out they got those like they got the they got people there at bar cave that are like helping with all that like okay, i think they do really well at like even a dog that's like new or like yeah. more timid they they um, Rocky and Zazie there, they kind of play with other dogs, but really do their own thing. Yeah. They want to only play with each other and they sniff, they sniff everything. Um, but yeah, some dogs are in there just going full throttle playing. But I think there's enough space to where the dogs, I feel like most dogs could just like fit in just fine. Cause they can always go to a different part of the park or whatever. Yeah. Um, that place is awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's all, awesome. Uh, all right. Finishing up last question. Cause you said you love movies. Uh, top five movies right now. Oh man. Top. So top five recent movies. Whatever you want, um, whatever you want to take. My that's top a, five that's movies a very ever. Open-ended question. You could do a top ten movies. Okay, so I saw, Dune 2, Don 2, Dune, uh, I saw Dune two. Don two. I saw Dune two. Dune two is amazing. Okay. Super awesome. Visually stunning. Uh, just great movie. Great sequel. Okay. Um, very long. I can't wait to watch it again. Um, but it's like Lord of the Rings. Like it's very good. But like you could get more from watching it, or like watching Game of Thrones. Like you could get more from watching it a second time. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed that one. Uh, my favorite movie of all time. I like. Uh, this is a funny one, but like. Uh, I like Silver Linings Playbook. Yes. Um, I like uh, Gangs of New York. Um, and uh, those are probably my top two favorite that I kind of juggle. Um, and then I really like um, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Stop Motion Animation, okay. Wes Anderson, and Roald Dahl. Like, that's like the best. Like, I remember yeah. that's like the, Such like, that's like a holy trinity for me. Like, yeah. um, but yeah, recently I would say like Dune 2 has, has been incredible. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of really bad movies coming out right now. Um, also, I got to say one of my favorite movies, I got to give this a shout, is Con Air. Uh, I was about to say, what's your favorite Air Force movie? <laughs> yeah, Con Air is like an uh, airplane movie necessarily. And we, uh, um, I'll give a shout out to, uh, aside from the Beer Hop podcast, I did recently start with my friend Tony in New York. Uh, we have a Con Pair podcast. Right. And this is a movie podcast where we just compare movies to Con Air. Okay. So we'll, you know, so far we're only, we're coming up, we'll probably, we'll probably record our, th our third episode this okay. week, but uh, we've done, the first episode was comparing it to Air Force One. The second episode, we compared it to the movie Ghost Rider. Okay. And then such a bad movie, yeah. that is, right? With Amber Heard and uh, yeah, oh Nicholas my god, Cage. it's terrible, bro. Such it's terrible movie. But I remember that. Yeah. So, uh, oh my gosh, yeah. I'll say right now, most recent Dune Two has been the best movie I've seen in a while, and then, um, but uh, all time favorite, Silver Lang's Playbook. Okay. Um, and dude, oh, there's so many movies, man. It's hard for me to. See. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that. I, there's a few good ones coming out. The new Tom Hardy one coming out called The Bike Riders looks really good. It makes me want to go buy an Indian motorcycle. Heck yeah! Uh, I saw the new Bob Marley movie recently. Honestly, one very like, yeah. good. Okay, uh, but also it's. I wish, and this is the, probably the age coming out with me and the person I saw it with. Five, 30 seconds in, was like, can we get subtitles? Because I can't understand a word. Oh. When it comes out, I think on Netflix or wherever it comes out, like yeah. watching it with subtitles would be a different experience. Great movie though. Yeah, um, and what a sound track like such an iconic sound oh that's uh, another one mike speaking of soundtrack I, the iron claw iron claw was an ex exceptional movie as well i haven't seen that the iron claw is about wrestling i'm a wrestling diehard wrestling fan oh, as well is that with miles teller um it's not? no not miles teller it's uh, got um yes i know you talk about uh, uh zach whatever. zach efron yes. yeah uh -huh. dude uh -huh. that's they have an amazing um uh, like the the main the main movie soundtrack is great they have a song on there that is amazing um called i want to live this way forever but the movie is all about this wrestling family it's based off a true story um phenomenal movie also really well like really good recent movie that just came out so check that one out but <laughs> so people listening check that out uh where do people find you on instagram um i'm on instagram i'm a john g and rock j-o-h-n g 
A N D R O C. That's me and my girl Rocky. Um, Zazie's on there too, but she's not featured in the in the profile handle. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Well, mate, it's been a pleasure to chat. Um, thanks for coming on. It's been a long time coming. And uh, heck yeah, man. Here's to a successful David Goggins full by. Let's get it. Let's uh, get it in two weeks. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mike, thanks for having me on, man. This has been awesome. Appreciate you, sir. Awesome. For people listening, uh, yeah, we'll catch you next episode. Cheers. <laughs> Godspeed. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that great episode. Thank you so much for listening. As always, huge shout out to our sponsors, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, sharing an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Our other sponsor, the Chickasaw Nation, amazing sponsor they do amazing things for the state and they're always sponsoring something in oklahoma they're a huge supporter of oklahoma and without their support we wouldn't be able to do what we do and our third sponsor is diffie ford lincoln down in el reno now this one makes me so happy because these guys are great friends of mine um play a lot of golf together i've bought my cars from them do most of my oil changes down there, have a cup of coffee, hang out down in El Reno. It's a good spot to go. And not only are they great friends, but they provide a great service. So for over 60 years, a third generation family owned Oklahoma business down in El Reno. They're also in Bethany as well. So people in the Bethany area know the Diffies really well. But if you're looking for anything new used, um, Ford, Lincoln, or whatever, I'm sure they could find anything you want. Um, check them out, DiffieFord.net, and then on Instagram at DiffieFordLincoln. This episode is presented by Citizens Bank of Edmund. Citizens Bank of Edmund has been serving Edmund since 1901. They pride themselves on investing in the community and are here for all your personal and business banking needs. For more information, go to MyCitizens.Bank and follow them on Instagram at CitizensEdmund, as well as... Go bank there because I bank there too. It's been a fantastic personal experience for me. I've had my podcast account there now, my podcast business account there now for a few, four years now, I think. And it's been fantastic. So definitely worth your time. They're a great group of people and they're always there to answer the phone when I forget my password because I seem to forget it daily. Uh, So yeah, go to Citizens Edmund and um, check them out. It's been awesome. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.